Hi, welcome to Eyes to Heaven. I'm Jen, and today I'm here to talk to you about the next thing, which is just a continuation uh, of the Ark of the Covenant and that portion of scripture. And now I think it's going to be a little shorter today because I'm kind of moving along in the Exodus 25 area and just kind of um, expanding a little, just talking about the same thing, but putting a little more information on it. Uh, so uh, last time we spoke the, about this, I spoke about the golden rings, right? Uh, the rings that connect and help the priest to hold up uh, the Ark of the Covenant. And now we're going to continue in scripture. And I brought, um, I brought that whole portion uh, to the constellations and uh, what constellations connect to those, which was corn, Corona Borealis and Australis and uh, Canes Venetici, right? Or Cans. <laughs> and that's what I'm going to kind of continue to talk about today. So that portion in scripture um, uh, where he's talking about the temple and everything uh, is a picture of the sky, right? And so each constellation is a picture of either uh, who God is, what God does, or how he operates in some capacity, right? And so uh, it makes sense um, that we would then go to Boatis. And I've talked about Boatis before. If you've not watched my Boatis video, please go back and watch that. Because Boatis and the surrounding constellations that we're about to talk about are like the quintessential shepherd pictures, right? This is a picture of a shepherd, right? And so Boatis is the shepherd of the bear and the cows, which is Ursa Major, right? Uh, he is the one that like pushes the bear and the cow, uh, or the bear cow, around the truth, which is Ursa Minor uh, up at the North, the North Star, right? And so he drives the heavens around, right? Because it goes around the star, uh, trying to lead the mother Israel to Ursa Minor, the child or children, which is a representation of truth, right? But Draco, a representation of lying and lies is in the way. In this way, God's people must traverse through lies to get to the truth, right? Draco, if you will recall, is connected to Levi. The Levites are the priests. They have devised lies in order to obscure the truth. Why? For gain. Profiting off of the confused. Okay, here in Boatis, there is arctophylax. We have different words that relate to uh, these pictures, right? Um, because they are, they're all God's word can be seen in the sky, right? And so arctophylax is related to uh, Arcturus, right? Which is the chief star in Boatis. Um, and arctophylax itself means bear uh, watcher or steward, okay? And this idea of stewardship and watching is kind of how we're going to, uh, what we're going to talk about, what we're going to really focus on. And Arcturus uh, has been called the outcast star. Why? Um, because Boatis himself is a represent, uh, representation of speaking truth. We're lifting up the ark. And what is the ark? What do we talk about? The ark is the sky, right? This is God's temple. This is where he sits on his throne, right? Uh, and so lifting it up and talking about it is speaking the truth of this. And so when you do what I'm doing now, when you speak of uh, the truth, the way it truly is, people don't want to hear it. Uh, the masses absolutely don't want to hear what you have to say. And so you become an outcast. And this is, you know, sprinkled all throughout scripture. You have this picture of Elijah, John the Baptist, who eventually got fame, but uh, even Jesus at points. And um, you've got uh, these pictures of other prophets that kind of just did their own thing. And... Um, you know, who talked about the temple and they were all often, you know, they're, they were outcasts. They weren't, um, part of the world, if you will. Um, and then this Arcturus is also called Samaka Ramin or Rami, uh, by the Arabs, which means to raise on high and other titles include keeper of heaven, the guardian messenger, shepherd of the heavenly flock, the bold one. Okay. Uh, and this is a picture of you have to be bold, right? You must be bold in order to speak these things, right? <laughs> because all types of people want to tell you that you're wrong, 
And because this is not what the how the world sees things, the world is very concerned with um, physicality and the here and now, and they don't, you know, most of the world is not looking toward righteousness and looking toward who God is as a person, right? Uh, they're more concerned with here and now and their slavery and their work. And Boatiz is related to a box, right? Uh, you kind of have that sound of boa, right? Box. Uh, is also a bee, but you have the phylax treasury or fortune. Um, a roaring and trumpeting and bellowing is here as well. A uh, loud bellowing, booing and mooing, uh, and a calling together is related too. And these are in secular sources. This is not just a, you know, oh, I feel this is how it is, right? If you look at secular sources and look at the words related to these uh, and the overall gist that people give, right, there is, uh, these words are associated, okay? Um, I find this person very interesting. I don't know if I've mentioned him before, um, but there is uh, Marcus Manilius. I think it might just be um, Manilius who wrote uh, Astronomica. I find that what Manilius says uh, about certain constellations is very interesting because he gives you uh, he gives you root words sometimes, uh, a lot of the time, um, but he also can like, he kind of not upbraids it, but he kind of um, puts some wisdom in some of his words. And um, what's interesting about that is this is like the this is the glory of the nations, these things, okay? And fairy tales are the same way. Fairy tales are just stories of the stars um, that have been given from generation to generation to help people understand um, the stars. And over time, it was lost because a lot of this knowledge uh, about the sky was taken from us. Um, and, you know, the knowledge of the kingdom of heaven was taken from, uh, the world, um, because of the sins of the world, right? And so Manilia, um, he said about Boatis, to those born under Arctophylax, Arcturus, fortune herself makes, uh, bold to entrust her treasures so that the wealth of the monarchs of the temple finances will be in their keeping. They will be kings under kings and ministers of state and be charged with guardianship of the people or as the stewards of grand houses, they will confine their business to the care of another's home. Okay, so this is a picture here of the steward that uh, Jesus gives, the three stewards that have the money, right? And we have Matthew 25, 14 to 30. We know that we're all kings and priests, right? Um, specifically will be in when we read Revelation, we have this picture of kings and priests. Um, and we have this picture of Jesus coming on the clouds, right? Like in Boatis, this picture of a shepherd, the one that revolves around truth that makes everything go, right? This picture of God who is truthful and who is the true shepherd, right? But you have these stewards in Matthew 25 that they didn't all do the right thing, right? You have the good, the best steward that had 10, uh, 10 pieces of money, right? And he got 10 more. And then you have the next one who got a couple and he got a couple more. And then you have the last steward that didn't, he like buried the money, right? And instead of making more of the money, uh, you know, the, the owner got really upset with him and took his money and gave it to the one with 10. Right, so there's this idea of uh, whoever has more will get more, right? And there's a verse that I'll stick up on the screen about that. Um, but there is a stewardship and this is as the kingdom of heaven. So I talk about this a lot where the kingdom of heaven is mentioned by Jesus in several different ways. And it was it is because the kingdom of heaven is so vitally important to your understanding and to all of our understandings about who God is. Right. And so when we look at these things, we recognize God as the shepherd and the one that's going to show us these things um, and the one that's going to tell us the truth of all of, our, of all of these things and who's going to lead us as Israel to the right way. OK, and I spoke about Draco being in between um, the 
Ursa Major and Ursa Minor, right, and standing in between. But there is another constellation that I have talked about before called Camelopardalis. I think this is related to uh, one of the sons of Joseph. Um, but also, we're going to backtrack into this one because it is a camel leopard, okay, or a giraffe. He is an overseer that stands over the other animals and is connected to Atlas. Uh, and if you have looked at depictions of At Atlas, there's a Farnes Atlas, which shows Atlas not holding the world itself, but holding the constellations, not the continental world, right? Camels are a picture of height and the priestly class, right? I've talked about that before. Camelopardalis stands near Draco and also between Ursa Major and Ursa Minor, like I just said. Uh, and, but instead of representing the lies coming in the way of the truth, it shows the connection that Israel has to the truth, which is the covenant between God and humankind. So whereas we are supposed to be stewards, we are supposed to be looking over and, um, if you didn't know this, giraffes, other animals in the savannah where the giraffes live, they look to the giraffes to know if uh, predators are coming because uh, if the giraffe starts running, they have a better view uh, to be able to see what's going on. And so like zebra and stuff, they will hang out by the giraffes. And if they see the giraffes running, they know it's time to get out of there, right? There's probably a lion or something. Even though I think giraffes are pretty cool, I think they can, I think they can destroy a lion if they really wanted to. Um, but there's this picture of overseeing and stewardship, right? And so that is what we are called to do as kings and priests. We are supposed to be looking and looking into these things and finding the truth uh, connected to Israel. Okay, and that's what this all of this is about. Um, and so we're going to go uh, from the Exodus 25. I told you it's going to be a little bit shorter today. I don't think, I think we're going to talk about that in a minute. So... Um, verses 23 through 30. So this is what it actually says. And this is when people started to click off, um, I'm sure, um, because this has been mistranslated and mm, everybody's been saying that this uh, means the wrong thing. <laughs> okay. Um, if you have not watched my last video on this, you need to go back and watch that and listen to what that says. And then we will continue from there. Okay. So God has made his table from for sacred uses, its length and breadth to the heights, laid over with pure and clean gold, prepared for him as a crown on every side. The Lord has fashioned it for swiftness, and the four corners of which he has fastened with cherubim according to his authority alone. Only he can support the heavens. He alone has prepared the tree of life with splendor of which you shall eat. This is a picture of um, the knowledge from the sky, okay, is the knowledge of the tree of life, right? Because the words are in the sky. God's word is in the sky is a picture of Jesus, right? From here pours forth all good food, clean and precious. Here he gives bread from heaven to those who seek his face continually. And from his thigh he has fashioned a branch that sprouts as the topmost lofty foundation that holds the tabernacle together and the going out and coming in. The Lord is one that leads the footsteps of his people, the house of Israel, establishing a light to their path that Israel may flourish. The Lord has spoken this from his everlasting hills where his words go out like a light from his doors. The pillars of all creation come from the one God fashioned from his splendor. It shall be to you as food and a lamp to give forth light that, to your faces, that you may see those that seek to cover up the truth. The Lord fashioned these pillars as a yoke, pure and full of splendor, a pattern for his children that he has shown you from his holy mountain. Okay, and that's what it is supposed to really say and what it's supposed to really mean. And you can you can do that with, with what the, you can do with that what you will. That is what it is. That's what it's supposed to say. So... Um, when we talk about camel and we talk about this picture of priestliness, because the king, we have the Boatis here, which is more of a, a picture of the king here. Um, but you have the camel, which is a picture of a priest, right? Uh, and we have this saying from Jesus, which I found really interesting. He said, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven, right? If you look at the etymology of these things, if you look at the etymology of eye of a needle, 
some a few hundred years ago um, people used the eye of the needle to mean the center of revolution okay because isn't that what we're looking at in the sky we're looking at that that revolving camel around the eye of truth right it is easier than uh, for God's true priest to go through a revolution and understand the truth and for a rich man to enter in the kingdom of heaven. And maybe even we could take this to mean that God's priest cause a revolution through God's leading, right? What happened when the priest took the ark into uh, the Jordan? What happened? There was revolution, right? Um, Egypt passed away. The rulers of Egypt passed away. And all of God's people lived, right? They made it through. Even still, the eyes of the Lord go to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in behalf of them who, whose heart is perfect toward him. What does that mean, friends? Um, I have made TikTok videos talking about that. And these pictures of stars are reiterated over and over again in scripture to, you know, there are different pictures of them all over scripture in different ways and the eyes of the lord are pictures of stars okay these things revolve around over the entire earth and they permeate everything they bring everything into being through his words that are associated with them right and they go throughout the entire earth and god makes everything go and so he gives favor to those that love him and show that him that they love him right so in Matthew 13, 11 through 15, I brought this up last time and I'm going to bring it up again. And Jesus said to you, it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but to them, it has not been given for to the one who has more, more will be given and he will have abundance. But from the one who has not even what he has will be taken away. Right? Just like the parable. This is why I speak to them in parables, a parallel case cited in illustration, right? Because seeing they do not see, and hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. Indeed, uh, in their case, uh, the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled. It says, you will indeed hear, but never understand, and you will indeed see, but never perceive. For this people's heart has grown dull with their ear, uh, ears, they can barely hear, and their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and turn, and I would heal them. So that's what's happened. That is the majority of the world um, and versus the people that are listening, right? And people come to my channel and they uh, and they'll listen and they'll hear and they'll take it really well, right? Like the parable. And then the world will come as a bird and eat that seed, right? Because they've been told this is the way it should go. And instead of looking to God themselves and praying and discerning themselves, they take um, what the wolves have told them is true, and they run with that. And that's why there's only a hundred some subscribers on this channel is because people don't discern for themselves. They don't recognize the kingdom of heaven as their real abode or their inheritance. And so they turn it aside in favor of what society deems appropriate. Right, and not what God has ordained for his children, which is sad. So these things too, we're meant to talk about that and all of these things. We're supposed to tell people about this. We're supposed to lift it up. We're supposed to bear it, right? This is our burden. This is our real yoke. Um, and this is a very important yoke. It's a very big thing and yet it is very light because God makes it easy for us. Um, because it's right there. Everything is connected. It's easy to see, right? People see this and they're like, yes, that makes sense. Um, and then, you know, they, they have to deny the truth essentially. Right. But our, our job is to lift it up and talk about this and share it with people. And, um, and in our doing so we will be saved, uh, through, through the trials that are coming <laughs> uh and the trials that are already here because my gosh like everything is 
is so terrible but so the thing that i have to say this week is essentially very short and this is a pretty short video for what i'm used to doing um so thus saith the lord god maker of heaven and earth i will protect you by putting you to pasture with great delight to give you eyes to see and ears to hear thus saith the lord maker of heaven and earth there's not very much to say to that And we will be continuing uh, next time, God willing. Um, I've just uh, got to continue with some of the other stuff, except we're going to um, touch on some constellations that I don't think I've been over. So, or at least one anyway. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, and I will see you next time. And I hope you have a good one.